Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, final Clarion Cafe this season before we all break for the holiday. And it's devoted to um, a special project that Clarion Eric is uh, supporting, which is called Parliament. And we will today learn about the results of this uh, project from the project coordinators and all the project participants. Uh, the cafe is organized by the entire parliament team who has worked really hard this past year uh, to pull this project off and it's hosted by me. My name is Daria Fischer and I'm the uh, chair of the Clarion User Involvement Committee. Uh, this is the schedule for today. Uh, I will first briefly present uh, what Claring is all about and uh, give a quick introduction into the initiative uh, that is the umbrella of uh, this parliament project. It's called Claring Resource Families. And then we dive deep into the parliament project. First, we will uh, hear from the project uh, coordinators uh, on what Parla Claring uh, is or has been. And then we will uh, hear from Tomas Sheriavet, who um, monitored the creation of the corpora in such a way that they are maximally comparable and that they are as interoperable as possible. Uh, next, uh, we move to the second part of the cafe, where we will hear uh, fr uh, from three different people who did three different showcases for Parliament on Parliament data. Uh, this will be Marta, Miguel and Philip. And uh, finally, in a discussion panel, we will hear on lessons learned from uh, several Parliament project partners from the Czech Republic, Iceland, Italy and the UK. And we will close the uh, cafe with a Q&A session and wrap up. Uh, so very briefly, uh, what Clarin is all about. Uh, Clarin is the common language resources and technologies uh, infrastructure that provides easy and sustainable access for scholars from various disciplines in the humanities and social sciences, as well as other disciplines. Uh, Clarin uh, offers digital language data in different modalities, be it written, spoken or video form. Uh, in addition to the data, uh, Clarin also offers advanced tools that allow you to dis discover the data, uh, exploit the data, annotate the data and combine several data sets together, regardless of where they are located. Um, we offer this through a single sign-on environment and in a way we also serve as an ecosystem for knowledge sharing in general. Uh, Clarin is also an integral part of EOSC. Next. Uh, Clarin is quite a big network. Uh, it uh, comprises 68 centers and has 21 member countries. So each uh, citizen of this country is basically treated as a full member of the Clarin network. In addition to full members, we also have three observer countries and some centers also belong uh, to locations outside uh, the Euro European Union, which is the USA and South Africa. Uh, Clarin is very proud of its uh, technical infrastructure, uh, which basically uh, comprises uh, three uh, overall components. Um, on the one hand, we have rich metadata about the resources and tools that we're offering, and we're also harvesting this from all the Clarin uh, repositories. Then centrally, um, we offer a functionality for metadata search uh, that is called Virtual Language Observatory. And finally, once you have selected the uh, relevant data that you want to uh, use for your work, uh, we also offer uh, data analysis support through the uh, service called Language Resource Switchboard. You can explore all these three um, in more detail through the links that are provided at the bottom of the slide. Next. Uh, in addition to the technical infrastructure, we are also working really hard to uh, build the knowledge infrastructure. And we do this through uh, user involvement and knowledge sharing committees. And on this slide, you have um, uh, screenshots uh, of pointers on the rich website of Clarin Eric, where you can get more information about various initiatives that are part of the knowledge infrastructure. Next. And finally, um, 
Let us take a look at the uh, initiative that is the umbrella of uh, the Parliament project. It's called Clarin Resource Initiative. Um, Clarin Resource uh, Families Initiative uh, offers user-friendly overviews for different types of data that are available in the Clarin Research Infrastructure. I also provided a link directly to the uh, website of Clarin Resource Families below. Um, currently, it uh, showcases 12 corpora families, five families of lexical resources and four tool families. Um, for each of these families, um, we list uh, in a user-friendly way the most important metadata and brief descriptions of the resources and tools, as well as provide links to download pages and concordances wherever they are available. Uh, Declaring Resource Families Initiative uh, was uh, set up uh, to meet the needs of, of researchers from the digital humanities and social sciences, as well as human language technologies, so that uh, we facilitate uh, comparative research as much as possible. Uh, Clarin Resource Family Initiative is a collaborative initiative and you can get involved too in various ways. First, if you uh, re notice any resources of your own or resources that you're using uh, that are missing in our overviews, uh, please let us know and we will add them. Um, if you have resources that are relevant for the resource families, please let us know as well, and we can help you deposit your resources uh, with a Clarin re uh, repository. And finally, if you're already active in the Clarin network, you can also uh, apply for funding for small projects with which we can uh, then uh, extend the scope of the Clarin resource initiative. I provide the link to the call below. And now uh, it's time to start the cafe. I give the floor to the coordinators of the Parliament project to tell us uh, what the uh, project, project was all about, what they did within the project, and what results uh, we can expect today. Mm -hmm. 